My name is Jason Scott Lee, and I am a Hawaiian actor. Some of you may remember a few of the movies I've acted in, such as Dragon the Bruce Lee Story, The Jungle Book, Rapa Nui, or Mulan. My most recent film was The Wind and the Reckoning, where I played Kalua i Ko'olau. The film is set in 1893 after the illegal overthrow of the government of the Hawaiian Kingdom, where the insurgents, calling themselves the Provisional Government, tried to capture Ko'olau and send him to Kalau Papa after he contracted leprosy. Like many of you growing up in Hawaii, I didn't know the true history of our country until the 1990s after meeting Dr. Keanu Sai. As we now know, denationalization, called Americanization, had a devastating effect on Hawaiian subjects, like me, and our national consciousness since it was formally implemented as a policy in 1906. My great-grandparents were born in the Hawaiian Kingdom in the 1880s, and their national consciousness was very different. They knew their country. I didn't. But now we are beginning to know. I'm here to introduce the trailer for the award-winning documentary by Ben Cohn, titled the Acting Hawaiian Council of Regency, exposing the American occupation of the Hawaiian Kingdom. Since 1997, the Council of Regency has been exposing the American military occupation of the Hawaiian Kingdom through education at the university, international and national courts, government forums, and public presentations. Today, we are here to showcase the Royal Commission of Inquiry investigating war crimes and human rights violations committed in the Hawaiian Kingdom with legal experts from here and Europe. With renowned Hawaiian musicians and entertainers, we also are here to celebrate the story of our country's perseverance and its continued existence despite over a century of occupation. Our late Queen Lili Kalani urged us to onipa, to stand firm, and we have Aloha Aina, Love of country. So how does a country become a part of another country? Well, for one, you need a government there to enter into a treaty transferring Hawaii to the United States. We don't have that. The United States overthrew our government. So instead, what the United States did in 1898 was instead of acquiring Hawaii legally by a treaty, they passed a law called a Joint Resolution of Annexation, an agreement between the House and the Senate, which was then signed into law by President McKinley in 1898. The United States could no more annex Hawaii, a country, by passing a law than it could pass a law today annexing France. That's why we've been occupied. For the first time ever, the legal question of whether or not Hawaii has a right to assert national independence is now being considered at the highest court in America. So for the last 20 years, Keanu and I and my brother Umi have been, this is what we've been doing. This is, this is pretty much, this is not our job. It's kind of our life. Uh, and we've turned it into a job. Um, because before so, no so one we've would listen to us. So we've now started the program. So Kaui's going to start. Because oh. <laughs> I'm like, uh, I got to. But hey, it, it, it works. It works. It's good. So you know, how I'm is, older than him. You know, so. <laughs> no, but in six months we're the same age. And then she gets older again. I can say that I have not had one instance in court where there's been any opposition to either the factual, the legal, or historical arguments that we made concerning the legal status of the Hawaiian Kingdom. The United States of America could have entered the Larson versus Hawaiian Kingdom case, brought their argument for why Hawaii is the 50th state and not an occupied country, and that proceeding would have never happened. For whatever reason, America chose not to do that. Rather, what we find is that the United States has never expressed, it, expressed itself as an occupier. Who would? They will never admit to occupation. But yet, to admit to occupation is, in a sense, to admit to the continued existence of the Hawaiian Kingdom as an independent state. Hawaii's legal and political history today is, is much more complex, is much more nuanced, in part because we have a much better understanding 
of what took place in the 19th century. Council of Regency was started um, according to Article 33 of the Constitution of 1864 in similar fashion to the Belgian Council of Regency, which was established when Belgium was in exile. The Hawaiian Council of Regency was established the same way under our law. So that the Council of Regency can uh, represent a nation that is in exile at the, at the international level. And, and I look forward to their royal, uh, the Royal Commission of Inquiry. If we can accept the fact that there still is a kingdom of Hawaii and that it was never annexed, that um, there was occupation and there still is occupation, then how do we deal with that? And I was really impressed that he followed through with what he told us in the May 15th meeting with the Council of Regents, or Regency, and uh, um, created the um, re reconciliation or recognition of our current government. In my capacity as Jen Ruggles' um, lawyer, Jen is, was at the time a member of the Hawaii County Council who had come to some realizations, troubling realizations, about her situation being an office holder in an occupation government that didn't recognize itself as an occupation government and was placing her at risk of committing war crimes. There was also a link to the Permanent Court of Arbitration's case repository where it, it showed a case titled Lance Larson versus the Hawaiian Kingdom and it was an active case on their case repository, which really proved that the Hawaiian Kingdom does continue to exist. And from what I understood, the Acting Council of Regency is what brought that case to the Permanent Court of Arbitration. That people have a hard, hard time to accept the truth. I run into this constantly. I introduce myself, then we start a discussion, then I tell them what we now know. Their eyes become large, they begin to smile incredulously, and then once you mention the court case in The Hague, things change, and they begin to take it seriously.